Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video we're going to be making a spinning trap part which is what you see behind me. In prior videos we've done a trap part where it sits on the ground and whenever the player touches it the player dies. This time the trap part is going to be spinning around to make it a little bit more difficult. Alright so let's go ahead and take a quick look. So this is the trap part and it's spinning. You can adjust the size of this trap part and you can also adjust the speed too. You can have this in an obby course where you have to have the players jump through it to get to the other side. And depending on how hard you want to make your course, like I said before, you can always adjust the speed. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into this and see how we can code this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so to get started making this spinning trap part, the first thing we're going to do is add a part into the game. We'll get that one single part coded, and then we'll just make a copy of it and connect them. All right, so to start with this, let's go ahead and add a part into the game. You can choose whatever color that you like, and then what I'm going to do is just make it a little bit longer. So that looks good there. And the way we're going to make this part spin is by changing its orientation. So if you click on the part and then go under Properties, you're going to look for Orientation. And then if you change these, this changes the rotation of your part. So what I'm going to do is for the Y part, I'm going to type in 90 and then press Enter. And then if you notice like mine it didn't spin, one thing you may have to adjust is if you look under your part, uh, mine has a weld which means it's stuck to the base plate. So what you can do to fix that is just go up here to move and then just raise it a little bit off the, the base plate. And then that weld goes away, and if I try that one more time, so I'll put a 90 here, then it rotates it. So what we're going to do to spin this is just, while the game is running, we're going to keep adding small numbers to this Y. So for example, we'll go from like 1, and then 2, and then 3. And then the effect that it's going to create, it's going to make it look like the part is spinning. So let's go ahead and do that with a code. So we're going to go under the Explore menu and find your part. And then we're going to be adding a script onto this part. You can go ahead and delete the print hello world message. And the first thing we're going to say is local part is equal to script dot parent. And what this does, it just makes the part that we're working with easier to reference. So instead of just saying something like part dot orientation, if I did not include this, then I'd have to say game.workspace.part. So it just shortens that um, sequence a little bit so I don't have to write as much. The next thing we're going to say is part.orientation. And this is going to be equal to part.orientation again. And then we're going to be adding something to it. And we can't add just single numbers to it. We're going to be adding a set of three numbers, an X, a Y, and a Z. So to do, to do that, we're going to say vector. And then it's going to be vector three, since we're adding three numbers to it, dot new. And then inside the parentheses here, we need to tell it uh, an X, a Y, and a Z. So to make our part spin, we're only going to be changing the Y position. So I'm going to keep the X part zero. Let's start with just 1 for the Y position, and then 0 for the Z position. Okay, so if I run this code right now, it'll set my Y orientation to 1, but I don't really want to set it, I want to keep changing it forever. So to do that, I'm going to put this line of code inside of a while true loop. So I'm going to say while true, do, and then below, I'm just going to write end. just like that. So what this is going to do while the program is running, it's going to add 1 to the Y orientation of the part, and then it's just going to keep repeating that over and over again. We do need to add one more thing though. So we need to add a small wait time, and let's go ahead and start by just saying uh, 0 0.1. So it's going to, it, so for this part right here, it's going to add 1 to the Y orientation, It'll wait 0.1 seconds and then add another one to it. So let's go ahead and see how that looks so far. Okay. 
Okay, so that's the one I made before, and this is the one that we're working on now. Okay, so it is spinning, but it's going pretty slow. So let me go ahead and show you how you can just adjust the speed of it. And you have two different options for how you adjust the speed. You can either increase this part, so I can say something like 5, or you can make the wait time smaller. So let's go ahead and try it this way. So instead of adding 1 each time, it's going to add 5. Okay, so this time we can see it's quite a bit faster. And let me show you the other way too. So going back to the script, I can also adjust the wait time. So let's put a zero in front of this. So it'll make the wait time much smaller. And then we'll see what the effect is. Okay, so it's still going faster. And to me, by adjusting the wait time to make it smaller, it seems to make the motion a little bit smoother. So if you increase just this part of it, it still works. Um, just to me, it looks a little bit more stuttery, where if you adjust the wait time, it seems like it's a smoother motion. But you can adjust both of those to your liking. All right, so we have the movement part of it done. We still have to add one more part to it. So right now, whenever I touch this part here, um, I can touch it, but it doesn't kill me. So what we're going to do to fix that is we'll go back to our part and we're going to add another script onto this. And you can rename these if you like. So let's call this one move. And then we'll make another script. And let's call this one die. All right, so for this script, we're going to start with the same thing. So local part is equal to script dot parent and then this time we're going to be making a function so we're going to say local function and let's call this one kill uh, this one is going to take in a parameter we're going to call this one body part and what we're going to do first is we're going to say local let's say person is equal to body part dot parent. So what this is doing, whenever the part gets touched, it's going to take in the body part that is touching the part. And then we're trying to find the actual character that body part belongs to, which is what we're doing on this line right here. So we're taking the body part and then using it to find the parent that it belongs to and storing that in a variable called person. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is say local humanoid. And this is going to be equal to person. And then colon find first child which is a and then inside the parentheses you're going to do quotation marks and then humanoid. Okay, so what we're doing on this line is we're storing uh, inside this variable humanoid, we're using the person, so the player that the part belongs to. We're seeing if this player or object has a humanoid part. And then if it does have a humanoid part, we're going to say if, and then humanoid. So if this uh, part has a humanoid part, then we're going to set its health to zero. So to do that, we just say humanoid dot health is equal to zero. At the very bottom, we just need to set up a touched event. So we're going to say part dot touched colon connect. And then inside of this, we need to put the name of our function. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and try it out and make sure it's working. Okay, when I enter the game, I see I have an error down here, so let's go ahead and stop it, and we'll go back and see what's wrong. And I notice right here, this I should be capital, and that should be it. Yeah, so let's go ahead and go back, and we'll try it again. 
All right, so no errors. Let's go ahead and run over to this part and see if it kills me when I touch it. All right, great. So that seems like it's working. So let's go ahead and stop it. So that's everything we need for this one part. So all we have to do now is make a copy of it and then rotate it uh, 90 degrees. So to do that, let's just go ahead and click on it. And then we'll do Control C, Control V, or whichever way you want to copy it. And then for this part, what we're going to do is go under Orientation. We'll change this to 90. And it looks like I changed both of them. So let me separate these two parts a little bit. Okay, we'll rotate it. So back under Orientation. Change that to 90. There we go. All right, so now I'm just going to lower it to where they're touching. Okay, that looks good. And then what we can do now is we're going to highlight both of those and then go up here to group. So that makes them into a model where I have both of my parts and then each one has the code already on it. So let's go ahead and try this again and make sure it's still working. Okay, and I noticed that they separated, so that's an issue I'm going to have to fix a little bit later. So let's go ahead and make sure that it still kills me. All right, looks good. So it's wobbling around, which tells me that I didn't anchor the parts. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to select both of them and then just press anchor. All right, let's go back and see if that fixes it. Okay, that looks much better. And then if I touch them, they kill me. If you would like to adjust the size of them at this point, all you have to do is click on the individual part within the model, and then you can stretch them to whatever size you like. So I'll click on this one, I can stretch it, and make it to whatever size I want my trap part. Alright, so this is going to be the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.